So I'll officially call for a motion to move that item above. Thank you. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Thank you. And I apologize to everybody that I have to leave, but I have a statement that I'm going to read into the record. In fact, bear with me. I'm going to read into the record a statement from myself as chairman. We need to grab Ted. Um, no, no, he's recused. He's gone home, I think. As a result of a huge amount of misinformation being circulated relating to the issue of public disclosure of documents and the recent incidences of unacceptably bad behavior at zoning commission meetings, I've prepared this statement in an attempt to clarify and place on record an explanation of recent actions by me and also by Commissioner Clark and of allegations of violations of FOI statutes. First, Commissioner Clark has been criticized for unilaterally removing the privileged part of the agenda of the August 9th meeting due to the unruly and uncontrolled behavior of several people. All this can be seen in the widely commented and unfortunately edited YouTube video. Counselors confirm that Mr. Clark was completely within his authority to do that without the need for a vote of the commission. Statute is silent on this issue and leaves it entirely up to the judgment of the chair. Mr. Clark has my full support in doing whatever he considers necessary to keep order. Secondly, at the same meeting, Mr. Clark found it necessary to adjourn the meeting completely due to the threatening behavior of several people. And again, he was acting entirely within his authority. And again, he has my full support. Regarding my imposition of a three-minute maximum for public participation and privilege of the floor, the mechanics of keeping order in a meeting rests with the chairman. There's no requirement, either under statute or under rules of order, or any regulation that requires a vote to be taken before instituting such a time limit. However, it's not my intent to stifle public comment, and I clearly stated that this would apply to each time a participant spoke and that the opportunity for anyone to make supplemental statements after others have had the opportunity to speak would be granted. I have no alternative but to take this action to maintain control over the co public comment part of the meeting. Regarding attorney-client privilege communications, from time to time the Commission requests input from its attorneys and receives responses under confidential cover regarding current and pros regulations as well as guidance on proceedings. The ability to solicit and consider legal advice under confidential cover is an essential tool for the effective performance of the Commission's function. Such attorney-client correspondence is not subject to freedom of information release under state statute. The FOI statutes have been mischaracterized and wrongly interpreted by those who think the attorney-client communication is subject to publication under FOI. The statutes specifically exclude the release of such correspondence. Respectfully, Martin, over to the chair. <coughs> and I apologize that on that note, I have to hand over to um, um, Vice Chairman Clark, who will uh, seek the time of the Thanks. I disagree with part of this. And, uh, the statement you said that uh, Mr. Clark uh, removed it uh, because of uh, people who were acting badly. He removed it before anybody take it, said anything. Take it up through the chairman. Thank you. Yeah. You're in, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm we're three in, and I think you were. I was no, out. You're out. You're back you're in. in. Okay, so you're cheating. Everybody. Ted, 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 Ted,